All right, everybody has joined. No one in the waiting room right now, Jim. So go ahead and get us started. Terrific. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's executive education session on ancient spiritual practices for developing wisdom and leading at the edge. And boy, oh boy, is this the year where we could all stand to deepen our spiritual practices and expand our wisdom as we look to guide our leadership, our life, and our organizations into 2021 and beyond. My name is Jim Ludema, and I am the director of the Center for Values Driven Leadership at Benedictine University. Um, I will be your host today and have the pleasure of presenting along with my colleagues, Dr. Amber Johnson and Dr. Nancy Sayer, whom I will introduce in just a minute. But first, a bit of housekeeping. Uh, number one, we ask that you please keep yourself on mute with your video off. That will allow everyone to hear our speakers clearly and also prevent distractions. Uh, number two, if you are a regular attendee at our sessions, let me warn you that today is going to be a little bit different. You're used to a speaker followed by a Q&A session, but hearing a speaker talk about mindfulness isn't nearly as effective as actually practicing it. So today is going to be a little bit more hands-on. We're going to ask you to engage with us in three ancient spiritual practices that can help you bring a new level of focus and mindfulness to your leadership. And to do that, you're gonna need a pen and a piece of paper handy. So number three, uh, in the final practice we introduced today, it might be helpful for you to have a template for recording your thoughts. And Amber has posted a link or is showing a link on the PowerPoint slides that goes to uh, the, the template. And she'll also share that in the chat box. So if you're near a printer, go ahead and open that template and print the pages. And if you're not near a printer, don't worry about it. You can follow the prompts on the screen when we get there, uh, but then write your comments on a separate sheet of paper. Now, a brief word about the Center for Values Driven Leadership. Our mission is to help values driven leaders develop themselves and others, build flourishing companies and transform business and society. And each month we host a free executive education seminar like this one to help you develop as a leader. And we'll share more about our upcoming sessions at the end of the day, but uh, Amber is going to put a link in the chat box now so that you can check them out uh, at your convenience. Separately, I want to mention that our center is home to a PhD program designed specifically for senior executives. Uh, the program is a three year long program and classes are held once a month on weekends. So leaders can pursue their PhD while continuing to lead their company. So if you've ever considered earning your doctorate, now is the time to explore the program because we're currently recruiting for our next cohort of students, which will begin on April 8th. Uh, so Amber is going to share a link to the program in the chat box now, and I encourage you to check it out. Finally, let me briefly introduce the other speakers. First is Dr. Amber Johnson. Amber is Chief Communications Officer and Senior Research Associate in the Center for Values Driven Leadership and is also a recent graduate of our PhD program, having successfully completed her dissertation in May. Uh, her work was on the success factors in leading global change initiatives. Second is Dr. Nancy Sayer, and she is the co-founder of Interconnection Consulting, a boutique firm that helps leaders and organizations translate values into action in order to thrive. And before launching her current firm, Nancy served as a consultant coach and leadership development practitioner for organizations around the globe for many years. She has also been a therapist for over 20 years. And she too 
is a graduate of our PhD program in values-driven leadership, completing her dissertation uh, almost three years ago on the topic of benevolent leadership. So today I'll be presenting alongside Amber and Nancy. And to get us started, I wanna turn it over to you, Nancy. Take it away. Thank you, Jim, and welcome to everybody. And thank you for being a part of this, uh, this program. And as Jim said, I do think that this is a time of, of our lives and in our world where these practices can be particularly helpful. Um, as Jim said, uh, I, I did my dissertation back in 2018 and it was on benevolent leadership. And uh, I wanna just share a teeny bit because a lot of, well, mindfulness is something that we, is, is, is you know, being practiced in, in the world and, and it, we're pretty familiar with it. Um, there's also a research piece that kind of goes with that and why we decided to do what we're doing um, today and kind of moving in this direction. And a lot of that came out of the research that, that I did around benevolent leadership, which is a new a uh, new model of leadership that, is, that comes out of the literature for the common good. And, and so how do leaders lead for the common good? And so again, really a timely, uh, timely way to be thinking about uh, what it means to be a leader in this time. And in the benevolent leadership model, it, it's, it's anchored by four different streams of leadership or literature, excuse me. Um, so the first one is around um, in, in ethical leadership and ethical sensitivity. The second one uh, anchor is around spirituality and spiritual depth and spiritual leadership. Um, third one is in the uh, positive engagement vitality uh, stream of literature. And then the fourth one um, lands in, in the area of corporate social responsibility or community responsiveness. And so uh, in, in doing this research, what, what I found uh, with for-profit leaders um, in, in the for-profit sector specifically is that spirituality was a key anchor that separated the high scoring leaders from the lower scoring leaders. And so, uh, so one of the things that I did was to look at some of the practices, and and so what we what we gleaned from that, and Amber, you can go ahead and flip the the. Um, the the slide there, is that using contemplative uh, readings, practicing meditation, thinking and reflection, and, and just being in that contemplative space, and then being able to fully integrate one's spirituality into their work, and not necessarily their religion, it's really separate, it's that, that deeper, more spiritual aspect of, of who an individual is and what makes an individual up. And so it was these four components that, that really helped to set these high scoring leaders apart. And so this creates kind of the foundation for why we wanna share some of these practices with you today. So an example of that was a, was a direct quote from actually one of our leaders. Um, and, and, and what this person said was, when I was young, I had a tumor. The doctors thought it would kill me or at least cripple me for life, but it didn't. So I started to ask, why did that happen? Why did I of all people have that tumor and why was my life spared? I believe there's something bigger that intervened there, whether it was a God or the universe or whatever. It said, Clark, we need you out here for a reason. So we're gonna keep you alive and we're going to keep you strong. Be clear about your purpose and who you are and use it for the benefit of others. And so this is just an example of the kind of, of um, experience, the kind of, of way in which many of the leaders in the research that I did took a look at, at how this spirituality formed, shaped and formed them, not only as individuals, but also as leaders. So now we're going to invite you into this practice um, and you will be in this practice now for the, for the majority of our presentation. And so we're excited to have you here and we're excited to have you join. Amber? Terrific. All right. Well, we promised you three mindfulness practices and that we'd get you into them and doing them. And so let's start with the very first one, which is a visualization practice. So I want to invite all of you to sit comfortably in your chair. Um, be sure your back is supported and so you can sit straight and you've got your cameras off. No one's looking at you. So go ahead and just close your eyes. I'll keep my camera on, um, but I'm gonna try to close mine too. And while, I, while we're sitting here with our hands calmly supported maybe on our thighs, our backs straight, 
I want everyone to take a deep breath. And as you exhale, really let your body relax. On the next deep breath, concentrate on inhaling as long as you can, holding that breath for a few seconds, and then again, exhaling as long as you can. Let's do that two more times. And as we do, I want you to really imagine relaxing your whole body. Forget that you're in a Zoom and just be fully present to where you are. Inhale, hold that breath, and then exhale and relax. And now I want you to let your floats, your thoughts float away as you release those exhales. Let your mind come into a place of stillness and quiet. And on your next breath, I want you to imagine moving your awareness into a deep and quiet place inside of you. With your mind there in that quiet place, I want you to imagine that you're walking down a beautiful path. Imagine that path in as much detail as you can. Think of it as your inner sanctuary. Find what makes you feel comfortable and centered in that path and feel the beauty around you. Maybe there's an ocean and you feel the sand at your feet and you hear the waves. Maybe it's a forest and you can feel the sunlight through the leaves and the fresh breeze. Maybe it's a garden and you feel moss on the ground. You can hear birds, whatever it is. Spend a minute just getting in touch with that sanctuary. And while you do, take a minute to notice some of the details of this place. Really feel them, imagine them not with your mind, but experience them with all of the sensations that can be present. And take two deep breaths here. Now, as you're enjoying this quiet sanctuary, I want you to notice that off in the distance, you've become aware of the presence of someone else. It's a small child. In fact, it's not any child, it's, it's actually you. It's your inner child. And I want you to move slowly toward that child, carefully, delicately. Continue to notice the sanctuary around you. And as you get closer, allow yourself to sense how that child is really feeling emotionally. Approach the child to make contact in whatever way you sense would be appropriate right now. Reach out to hold a hand, whatever it might be. In this quiet place with this child, I want you to listen carefully. Ask the child if there's anything he or she wants to tell you. Anything or she wants to communicate to you. As you inhale and exhale, allow yourself to receive whatever message the child wants to communicate. Now ask the child what it needs most from you right now or in your life in general. And again, Really listen carefully to what the child has to tell you. Take a minute to observe what brings joy to this child. 
consider what your inner child really wants from life. Identify what you love most about this child. Be curious about what your child is yearning for. Is there something they want to do or something they want to be? Think about what you've seen bring light and spark to your inner child. We're gonna sit in silence for a few seconds, concentrate on your breath and continue to listen just carefully, as carefully as you can to whatever message might be here for you in this moment. we have to complete our time together and begin to leave the sanctuary. So in this moment, say goodbye to your inner child in whatever way feels good for both of you. Remember that that child remains in that very safe place inside of you. And as you say goodbye, let the child know that you'll be back, that you want to listen, that you want to provide for what that child needs. And now I want you to become aware of your body here in this room, in this event again. And as you feel ready, open your eyes back, shift in your chair a little, become alert again to those around you, those you see on screen. And in just a minute, Nancy is going to um, take us a step further and to use the experience of this visualization to guide us into the next exercise. But before we do move on, I do want to just acknowledge that that uh, visualization exercise was adapted from Shakti Gwain's meditations, creative visualization and meditation exercises to enrich your life. So that's definitely a resource you could call on if you wanted to spend more time finding that um, inner sanctuary and learning from it. And with that, Nancy, let me turn it over to you to move us to the next exercise. So thank you, Amber. So now what we're gonna ask you to do is to find a piece of paper and a pen. Um, and in the next uh, five or eight minutes, we're gonna ask you to write a letter to your inner spiritual child, to that young child that you sat in that place with, that you had a conversation with, that you asked questions of. And, and while it might be natural for you to want to type, we're really going to strongly encourage you to handwrite this letter. This will be useful in the next uh, exercise that we're going to do, but we also suspect that writing by hand is often a more memorable, a more evocative way of, of writing than, than typing. And so to begin this letter, we're simply going to ask you to put your own name at the top of the letter. So for me, dear Nancy. Um, and then we just simply want you to share your reflections. Maybe it's a prayer, maybe it's a wish uh, with, this, with this inner child. There, there may be a piece that you want to uh, make inner, you want to make some kind of peace with this inner child, or there may be something that you may want to apologize for. Or perhaps there's something that you want to congratulate or celebrate with your inner child for resolving a challenge that you've been dealing with. So there's no right or wrong way to do this exercise. Just simply follow your heart. Just follow what comes up and just simply keep writing. It doesn't need to be a perfectly composed letter. Just simply write. And in a way, imagine that your hands have their own wisdom, that, that your hands know what needs to be said and, and want to express their own creativity. So again, we're going to give you about eight minutes or so to complete this part of the exercise and, and just simply have that conversation with your inner child.
All right. I'd like to invite you back into the Zoom. Um, I'm sure that some of you are still writing, um, but uh, we would like to move on to the next practice, the next phase in the process. Um, and that is to move into creating a pan tomb poem. And for this exercise, it might be helpful to have that template handy that we discussed earlier. Amber will share the link again in the chat box. And you can either print the document or just open the file and look at it as you write on a separate piece of paper. Either way will work fine. So in the Buddhist tradition, writing poetry is often used as a spiritual practice and a pantum is a form of poetry that is comprised of a series of sentences or phrases that are repeated in specific patterns. And it's a relatively easy way to write poetry and that only three stanzas of poetry are created through the methodical and repetitive placement of sentences or phrases that you select. And as you do this, the poem uh, takes on new meaning for you uh, in each stanza and each time you read it. Now the form that we will follow today entails selecting six sentences or phrases from your letter, from your inner spiritual child. Uh, and from those six sentences or phrases, you will create three stanzas of poetry. And I'll walk you through it step by step. But as you select those six sentences or phrases, make sure that they are ones that are most meaningful and evocative for you. Now, just to give you an example, um, I did the uh, letter activity and a couple of phrases that came out for me in terms of what my inner child was asking of me. Number one was to know, love, and enjoy the beauty of God's creation. Number two was to give him unconditional love and care. And so those are a couple of sentences or phrases that I could just write down as, in, uh, as two of my six phrases. So I encourage you now to do the same thing. Just select six phrases that are most meaningful and evocative for you from your letter and write them down and number them one through six. Let's take a moment to do that. Okay, now the next step in the process, and that is to create three stanzas of poetry, each with four lines or phrases. Uh, and the way to do that is to just select phrases from the six that you uh, just listed. And you can see in stanza one, uh, the idea is to put a new phrase down on each line. So for example, new phrase means 
one that you haven't used before. I might put to know, love, and enjoy the beauty of God's creation in line one. I might put to love and care for me unconditionally in line two, and so on, uh, the first four lines there. Then in stanza two, you can see line five asks you to repeat line two in stanza one. And then line six asks you to put in another new phrase. Line seven, repeat line four from stanza one. Line eight, another new phrase. And so on through stanza three. So go ahead and fill in those three stanzas now. And I'll just give you a moment to do that. Okay, um, I don't know, uh, oh yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know if you could see the last, that is to say line 12, it says repeat line one in stanza one. I couldn't see it for a minute, but now I can see it. So I just wanted to give that instruction, but hopefully now you have your three stanzas of your Pantoom poem. Uh, and now I'd like to invite you to take a moment to read through your poem a couple of times in a peaceful rhythm. And then you may want to make some small word adjustments to smooth out the flow as you go. And once you've done that, then read it through one more time and just rest in its message. And then, uh, so we'll take a couple of minutes now to allow you to do that. Read through the poem a couple of times, make any adjustments you might wanna make then read it through one more time and rest in its message.
Okay. Welcome back. I hope that you have had the opportunity to rest in the message of your Pantoom poem and that it has brought you a measure of joy and peace and serenity and wisdom uh, in this moment. And I know that you'll leave this webinar and move quickly back into your day but I encourage you to revisit your poem this afternoon at mid-afternoon, perhaps before you log off for the day, and then again before you go to sleep. And each time, ask yourself, what message must I carry with me into my leadership, into my organization, and into my life uh, in this new year? We want to kind of wrap things up now by sharing some additional ancient spiritual practices that you may want to consider uh, in your life and leadership journey. Uh, and Nancy Sayer is going to walk us through some of those. So let me turn it back over to you, Nancy. Take it away. So thank you, Jim. And again, thank you for participating in that uh, in each one of those exercises. And just an additional note that um, if there's a particular line that you care to share with the group, just as a way to, to debrief, feel free to type that. One of the lines that was maybe meaningful to you from that exercise, type that in the chat room and maybe just share that. But I'd also like to say is another way to do that, we did it through letter writing, but you can also use um, contemplative kinds of readings or just any reading where you decide to just pull out six lines that are especially meaningful to you and, and create that poem out of that, that reading. So it, it could be a scriptural reading. It could, be, it could be a Parker Palmer kind of reading. It could be any kind of reading that's meaningful to you, that speaks to you and, and creating that kind of poem to have a catalog of those kinds of things to help you. Um, and that moves you into this, this practice of meditation, whether it's prayer or it's your own peaceful um, kind of meditation that, that we've learned that meditation is, is a practice that is not only good for our, um, for our emotional life, our mental health, but it's really good for our physical life and reducing stress and, and actually building capacity within our brains. Those who have practiced meditation actually have more gray matter in their brains. And so it's a good practice. Another practice very similar is, is an old ancient practice called Lectio Divina. And it's a process of, of reading through the same, um, it can be a, a scriptural, it can be a line, um, but reading through and repeating that, that line or that passage or that, that piece that is meaningful to you several different times and each time, what else speaks to me? What else speaks to me to get to some of that deeper wisdom? A, a third uh, practice is a very old practice of, of the labyrinth, which is not a maze, but it looks very much like a maze. But a labyrinth is a path that goes to the center of the, of the, of the labyrinth of that, that maze-like configuration very contemplative kind of practice. And the idea is to journey in and then to journey back out again in a contemplative sort of way. And so one of the things that we have provided is a finger labyrinth, something that you can do right at your desk. So usually labyrinths are done in a walking kind of, of way, but, um, but the finger labyrinth is something that you can use at your desk and, and use that as that contemplative practice. And then something that's very uh, useful, and, and I noticed uh, Amber just in the chat room put a link to some different finger labyrinths that you can that you can utilize and then a practice that we many of us use for our own physical fitness but is one for a calming one for bringing strength um, not only mentally and emotionally and spiritually but physically as well is yoga and for those of you who are in the chicagoland area um, i will be in march starting a uh, a new yoga class a program called grit grace and groundedness yoking yoga with leadership 
So if you're interested in taking part in that and it's in it's integrating um, yoga with uh, leadership concepts so that you can be a calmer leader in the midst of turbulent, critical, high, uh, high energy kinds of times so that you can stay centered, uh, feel free to do a private message to me with your email. I'm happy to reach out to you with regard to that. Um, and then again, the link to um, the, the exercises that we have provided. And then finally, a new book that's out called Breath. And it's it's a, a book that talks about kind of the lost art of breathing. And, and it talks about uh, how we can engage ourselves in various kinds of just breathing practices that help to slow our mind and, and that actually help to, to build our, our mental and physical capacity. So we invite you to take a look at that, at that book that, that really looks at the, the very tool that we carry with us, the very tool that gives us life um, is a very, very important tool that can be helpful in calming us and bringing that sense of peace to our day in the midst of a lot of chaos that can happen. Very good, thank you, Nancy. Um, so as we begin to wrap up today, I just want to thank you, Amber, and thank you, Nancy, for sharing your wisdom with us. And I am amazed each time I do these exercises, how much I take from them personally. And I'm sure that those of you who joined us today have had the same experience. So thank you both. Let me also remind you uh, about our PhD program in Values Driven Leadership for Senior Leaders. We are truly down to the wire on uh, recruiting our next cohort. And so if this is something you've wanted to do but just haven't found time to apply, please do so this week. Uh, we know that the program has the ability to help transform leaders and we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Also, let me share the date of our next free uh, executive education seminar, which will be Wednesday. February 17 at 12 noon central time. And this is a special one. It's in partnership with the employee resource groups for African-Americans at Nokia, Navistar and other Chicagoland companies. And our topic is intentional inclusion. And our guest speaker is Dr. Courtney McClooney from uh, Cornell University who is a world-renowned expert in this area. So please register at the link you see uh, in the chat uh, and be sure to check out our March session on leading change through appreciative inquiry as well. And with that, I want to thank you all again for joining us today. Uh, another word of thanks to Nancy and Amber uh, and May you bring focus and wisdom and mindfulness uh, into your leadership and life in 2021. Thank you. And with that, we are adjourned. So long and have a great rest of your day.